If we look at the safety instrumented function again, this will act automatically to bring the process to the safe state. So it's a protection function. And it, again, it'll use sensors, logic solver, final element. But with safety instrumented functions, as we shall see, it's a one for one. So it's dealing with a specific, a single specific hazard. And it will act in an automatic manner to bring that to a safe state, bring that process to a safe state to prevent that hazard. So if it's a high pressure, it's a high pressure SIF, we need to detect the high pressure, we need to be able to take action to reduce that or bring us back to the safe state. So this is the important thing. And the distinction between the SIS, which is the safety instrumented system, and the SIF, which is a single function, is very important because it's that SIF that will have the designated safety integrity level. That will have a specific SIL for that SIS. SIF, sorry. So what are the, the safety integrity levels? There are four safety integrity levels defined. SIL 1 being the lowest, SIL 4 being the highest. And they're typically an order of magnitude apart. So SIL 1 would be anywhere between 11 to 100, SIL 2 is 101 to 1000, SIL 3 is 1001 to 10,000, and SIL 4 is above. In the process industries, we do not have SIL 4 requirements. If you've done your PHA and LOPA and you've got a SIL 4 requirement, you may want to go back and have another look. Typically, we're going to be SIL 1 and SIL 2. Occasionally, we'll have SIL 3 requirements depending upon the application. But we do not have SIL 4. SIL 4, you'll get probably in railway signaling, SIL 4 systems there, nuclear, of course. Uh, Possibly some aeronautics will be SIL 4. But for the process industries, we're typically SIL 1, SIL 2, and occasionally SIL 3. And so when you look at the safety instrumented system, as I said, you could have different safety instrumented functions. And each of these safety instrumented functions are dealing with a single hazard. So you could have a, a situation where you could end up with a high pressure and a high temperature in one scenario. But there will be two separate SIFs, one SIF to deal with a high pressure, one SIF to deal with the high temperature, as opposed to the high pressure and temperature being dealt with in, it, it, by one SIF. So that's the way we design it. Specific, single specific function, safety function, to automatically bring us back to the safe state. And here's the definition. This again, the emphasis is on single. So a single set of actions and the corresponding equipment needed to identify a single hazard to bring it to the safe state. And that's why it's different from a CIS which can act in multiple ways to prevent multiple harmful outcomes. In other words, it has more than one SIF. Now, of course, the counter argument to that is if I only have a SIS with one SIF, then I could argue that that's a SIL, for example, SIL2, SIS. Yes, but that's not what we do. We always look at the SIFs, and we never say the SIS has a single SIL. And I've heard it with HIPS, because HIPS, High Integrity Pressure Protection Systems, which is used a lot in oil and gas and offshore, it may be a single SIF, and it may be SIL3, so they might say it's a SIL3 HIPS. That I've heard. But as a general rule, we separate the SIS from the SIFs, and we do not give the SIS a single SIL. So, examples of safety instrumented functions. On detecting high temperature, we want to prevent the column rupture by shutting off the steam flow to the reboiler. Fair enough, that's a high temperature. On detecting high pressure, we want to prevent the tank rupture by opening the valve to the relief system. So that's a high pressure. On detecting high level, we open the drain valve to direct excess liquid to some sort of waste sump to reduce environmental damage. So there's a level protection. And then we might want to stop the motor by disconnecting the power or activating the brake when severe overspeed is detected. 
Now, one of the things that we'll talk about when we get into the types of safety instrumented functions we can have and how they operate, normally in the process industries we deal with low demand. And as I said, I'll explain the difference in the, in the demand modes a bit later on. And they're normally de-energized to trip. So in other words, it's normally energized, and if we have a, a, a dangerous situation, we trip. With this, stop the motor by disconnecting the power or activating the brake. To activate a brake, that could be an energize system. So we might need an energize to trip. And again, we'll talk about the differences and the requirements and what's needed. And of course, on detecting a fire, issue alarms to minimize damage and of course, start up the um, suppression system if necessary. So again, as we said, this is not a complete SIF because it doesn't achieve safe state, but it's important because we have to mitigate the consequences of the hazard. The fact that we've lost containment of some description, we need to be able to detect it quickly enough, we need to be able to act quickly enough to, to mitigate that, to reduce the effects. Now the other thing to remember is, people say to me all the time, well if I've got a SIL2 sensor, a SIL2 sol logic solver and a SIL2 final element, I have a SIL2 SIF, don't I? Not necessarily. Because what you have to consider is the SIF is tip to tail and everything in between. So for example, if we've got some Zener barriers, we have to include the Zener barriers. If we've got splitters, we have to include the splitters. If we've got an interposing relay, we have to include the relay along with the sensor. And then from the logic solver point of view, we have to consider the ancillary equipment, which of course is the power supplies, the communication links, etc., etc. And the same on the output sides, the signal conditioning and the final element itself. So all of that, if it's a motor controller, we have to consider the motor controller as well. So all of that has to be considered as being part of the SIF. And so that's why just taking the SIL2 sensor, logic solver, and final element does not necessarily mean you'll achieve a SIL2 requirement.